Hi, everybody. My name is Lauren Ferkel. I'm Field Application Engineer at Virtual Electronics. And today I will talk a little bit about energy harvesting devices. Well, when you think about energy harvesting, first of all, uh, can you imagine that you already have been in touch with energy harvesting devices? Just think about maybe your bicycle or maybe you had a solar powered uh, calculator on your desk and maybe sometime you find some windmills which is running on water power, which is also actually energy harvesting. Well, energy harvesting actually is maybe you think energy for free, which is correct. But when you do develop a device for energy harvesting, you need to find kind of non-electrical form of energy. You have to harvest them, to convert them in electrical energy. And mostly you will collect more energy like you need. And then you have a opportunity to store that in somehow, in some whatever capacity or, or battery. And then you can recall them when you need. But when you're designing energy harvesting, uh, it could happen that in the past, in the mechanical age, you had just to ring a bell to make some sound. And when the ship is approaching the port, you know, okay, you are too close because the bell is too low and you can go a little bit more further that you don't hit the ground. By today, in the digital age, you have that kind of buoy which is transmitting the GPS position directly from this place and you have a much, much precise navigation. That can be done only if you are considering all these different modules in your device, like a stack and everything working in the highest efficiency and high reliability that you don't need to swim in the deep winter when it's frozen maybe, or maybe it's too cold water and change the battery or just to change the cable or something is broken there. Well, today we approximate that uh, and estimate that in, very close years in 2025, it will be more like 75 billion devices connected to each other. And this is not only just uh, our mobile phones, uh, it's also some devices which maybe you don't think about like to wear a shirt which has already a small Bluetooth device inside and give you details about your health or even the railways are using that for more like 20 years already for predictive maintenance. And soon we will have some tires which already give you information about the tire um, usage and also the temperature. And all that powering by battery is not a good idea. I think this is the long time of the energy harvesting devices is there and we have to think in this direction. If you think just using a battery, which is the most easiest way because it's not so expensive, of course, but batteries are toxic waste. They have a limited lifetime. And this is not what we want to do. We want to make autonomous electronics. We want to make de devices which have uh, no lead inside and no hazardous materials. First of all, we have to consider at first step, what is our energy demand and not the peak energy only. We have to know about a certain amount of time, what is the peak and what is the deep sleep mode or standby mode. And when we know exactly this uh, stuff of your power need of your sensors and devices, then we start to calculate and start to um, imagine what kind of different energy device we can harvest. So we can harvest solar, thermal, motion. How much we can harvest? We have to use a data logger over a, over a time to know exactly how much energy we can catch or how big must be our transducer. After that, we choose the right the harvester. If it's outside and we have enough daylight and this is not in a polar crisis where we have six months no light, then we can use solar harvester or we can use if we have enough vibration or if we have temperature difference, a thermoelectric generator. After that, how to store it? Capacity bank, super caps, or this kind of mix hyper uh, caps or ultra caps, or we can use just lithium polymer for be rechargeable. Fact is that the energy harvester output is increasing in the last years, and we can harvest by RF something like 0.1 microwatt per centimeter square. Is not the cleverest idea. With a photovoltaic, of course, this is a long time that we are using photovoltaics and 
we can harvest with the cheapest solar cell, 100 milliwatt per centimeter square. But also thermal is a good choice where is no sun and no vibration and no RF. With a good thermal, we can go up to more like 10 milliwatt per centimeter square. It's also, I saw one demonstrator, one watt per centimeter square. Of course, the temperature difference was high, but by normal temperature, we can already do something with thermal as well. In fact, the new processors are less uh, power hungry. If you look on, on the development of the last years, you will find out, of course, not by our mobile phones, but the most um, ARM processor, you can do it in a very, very uh, low voltage. And what you can do with this are different projects and, and devices. Virtual Electronic is one of the member of this uh, uh, European founding project called Symphony, where they will be developed and they are already in, in testing uh, printed materials for new devices. And you can do um, predicted maintenance for wind turbines. You can do some smart floors or uh, pressuring monitoring system for the bicycle tubes. Of course, we will deliver only just uh, passive components, but this is how it will be looks, these uh, use cases. This is one of these, um, rotor uh, for the windmills where they produce electricity. This is the another use case which is using the smart floor to detect the number of customer in the store. The distance right now in the pandemic is sometimes is also important and that can be done without wires, so without connection to grid and so on. And the e-bikes which is getting more and more popular, especially in Germany I can tell you, I did not know uh, that I will own three e-bikes, but right now all the family has an e-bike and everybody wants to know how good is this tire when I'm driving uh, with my bicycle at quite high speed. And that would be in the future also a possibility to buy these different uh, tubes, which has already a kind of um, ultra-low Bluetooth, so BLE, with uh, no battery, which is using just uh, uh, the vibration of the uh, tires. Yeah, how we can build that devices. One of this is, uh, of course, a company like Renesas, and uh, you will hear more, more about this processor. Uh, you can see they're making some enormous low power uh, consumption devices. This processor in a deep sleep mode, it can go down to 100 nanoamps. And there is here a small demonstrator made for uh, exhibition, just a small receiver, which is using these devices. Another company which is coming uh, after this presentation is the company Matrix with his thermoelectric generator uh, device and um, the DC-DC converter where is harvesting uh, the thermoelectricity and uh, make the power management and you will see in a later demonstration. All that is need uh, to use a passive component. This passive component is this kind of small transformer, one to 50 or the one to 100, to boost up the low voltage of this TEG, because the TEG is starting by five to 10 uh, millivolt, which is not enough to move the electrons in the NP junction of the silicons. So we need to boost them up. And this is how it looks inside of this small um, yeah, transformer or inductor, in fact which made possible that we can start with very, very low voltage. Where it will be used, that kind of devices, it could be in uh, monitoring of, of these uh, containers, it can be used in, in plant automation, it could be also in climate controller. There are so many devices which already is prepared in the future to be used. One of the applications which I found on the market was that from the company ABB, they use also thermoelectric to have a node for a sensor which is completely autonomous powered. Another nice application, it is a, a Windows monitoring for home or from hotels and it is inside of the glass and it can detect by indoor light or outdoor light, doesn't matter, it's a solar sensor system on chip if the window is closed or open. On the CES, a few years ago, company who making actually a kind of cosmetics like company L'Oreal, they made also a nice sensor which you can just stick it on your fingernail and this is a completely batteryless device which is using a 
UV LED like a harvester and put all this information in a, one single chip. And on the evening, you can read with NFC, with your mobile phone and the app, the exposure of your skin by this day. And you can decide which kind of sun blocker you can take next day. You can imagine this is something which is getting more and more interesting for everybody. In the medical technology, Professor Rogers in the University of Illinois, uh, already with his team, researching to make a mesh, and they developed a really piezo mesh, which can be directly sticked to the heart, and uh, making pacemaker autonomously without using batteries. So you can see energy harvesting getting interesting also for medical application. And my last slide, it is about a nice energy harvesting device discovered from me from a Brazilian guy who did patented and had also the red dot award. It's a mobile phone charging during you sleep and he's harvesting not the airflow, which that would be a little problem, but he's harvesting the snoring vibration. I don't know if that it's the right solution, but anyhow, there's possible. So for any questions, I will be still on the chat. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Kei Mai, uh, Product Marketing at Lanasos Electronics America. Today I'm, I'm going to talk about the microcontroller and its application for energy harvesting. So let's change the gear to the energy harvesting microcontroller product example. I will introduce our REMCU. It's a, it's a high level, the special technology is implemented for energy harvesting. And it's application example and the ecosystem Lanus is building with our partners. So let's get started. The RMC family is a new uh, microcontroller product line from Lanus and is one of the most energy efficient efficient MCU in the world today. Here are a few highlights on the RMCU. The first, the thanks to the SOTV process technology. The RMCU runs at the future low current in both active and standby modes, which is an ideal characteristic for energy harvesting applications. The second, the RMCU equips a 32-bit ARM CPU core and it can boost the CPU clock up to 64 MHz. It's not much common to run a CPU up to 64 MHz for energy harvesting applications. However, the RMCU supports a high speed clock to learn complex algorithms such as the voice triggering that require high speed processing, but still at a 10 times better power consumption than conventional MCUs we are. With RMCU, uh, you can think differently for energy harvesting scenarios. The third, RMCU gives a various ultra low power paper, such as a uh, on chip energy harvesting control circuit. 14-bit uh, ADC local flash programming for the over-the-air family, family updates and the ultra local timers. Like finally, the MCU equips a clip engine that runs at ultra low power and it supports your security requirements for endpoint IoT devices. The reason for the RMCU's ultra low power performance uh, is in its uh, transistor. The way Lanasas on the patented silicon process technology called the silicon octane buried oxide, and the technology lowers the current consumption down to the next level. Look at the SOT transistor model on the left. The transistor has some unique implementations uh, which do not exist on conventional bulk CMOS transistors. One of the unique implementation is the back bias electrode and embedded insulation layer. Um, and those suppress the transistors are currently gauge uh, shielding country. And the other uniqueness is a uh, uh, dope address channel structure that allows transistors to switch on and off faster at the lower uh, voltage than bulk CMOS transistor. That effectively lowers the active current uh, significantly. Thanks to these unique implementations, the RMCU's active current consumption is down to 12 microns per megahertz with the external DC DC mode, and its standby current is as low as 400 nanoamps with 32 kilobyte external retention. The RMCU's ultra low performance was proven by the ULP map CP benchmark 
with its uh, benchmark score of 705, which is one of the highest scores in the world today. A high score on the ULP Mark CP has a great meaning for us since it simulates a typical energy harvesting use case that wakes up MC from standby periodically and executes some algorithms as shown in the figure on the right. The next page shows the feature set on the RMCU. The RMCU supports various features to support many IoT endpoint applications. The old features are beneficial for ultra local application, but the feature sets highlighted in yellow are especially beneficial for energy harvesting applications. Uh, for instance, the uh, ultra low leakage ESM that we can retain all the 128 uh, kilobyte ESM blocks at the less than 15 up to 50 nanos, which is extremely low current leakage. We support the always on ADC sampling at 4 micrograms current for sensor application. Some nano power 32 bit timers, including RTC, that run in the standby mode. The ultra low power um, memory in pixel LCD at the same micrograms current for uh, application with a display. And the energy harvesting controller, which is a very key feature for today's session, and explain in the next slide. The built in energy harvesting controller, or EHC for short, is a very unique feature for microcontrollers and provides, a, uh, it provides you a great benefit for energy harvesting system designs. Uh, this slide briefly explains what the EHC hardware does. But first, uh, you can con connect the energy harvesting power source directly to the MCU, which you normally don't make such a circuit design. However, you are allowed to do so uh, because the EHC has an overcharge protection circuit that regulates the voltage from a harvester to an MC operation voltage. So you can connect the uh, energy harvesting to R01 directly. The energy is stored in a temporary storage, which is typically a 100 microfarad capacitor, and the energy is used to boot up the MCU system quickly. During the MCU boot up, the autonomous uh, startup sequence is controlled by EHC and provided the firmware, so you can get the reliable uh, system boot up. We just need a 5 microamps input current to boot up the MCU. So a tiny energy harvester can be used. Once the MC boot up is down, the energy charging to our energy storage device is managed by EHC automatically. And finally, uh, when the energy storage is charged to a certain level, the MC will call the interrupt to notify you to start uh, your application. Um, EHC is not like a fancy uh, energy harvesting gimmick, but uh, it works as a sub gimmick to manage the boot up sequence, uh, support the quick MSU boot up, and charge the rechargeable battery or supercap. The EHC is built in the early MCU, so it simplifies your energy harvesting system design uh, greatly. The following slides show the uh, block diagram for remote sensor application examples. The three cases are explained um, how the early MCU will fit the various energy harvesters. Uh, this first example of the energy harvesting system design is with the PV cell. The typical target applications are wearables, the home appliances, the building automation, the industrial health monitoring test centers, the smart agriculture, asset tracking devices, etc. The system is as simple as possible with the PV cell. Um, just connect the PV cell to the RE01 directory. We run a support of various PV cells uh, from our partner company that fit RE01 uh, MCU. The EHC is autonomy module, so it obtains uh, energy from PV cell and accumulates uh, energy into our energy street device efficiently while the MCU is in standby mode. The MC boot up after starting duty cycle and the charge large energy to uh, power consuming loads, including a uh, radio. And this second example of the energy harvesting system design is with the uh, some electric power generator 
for EEG for sure. The typical target applications are industrial health monitoring center, smart agriculture, motor sensor, uh, vital sensor, etc. A TEG based energy harvesting system is generally complex since we need to treat a small voltage from TEG and need careful uh, the public choices to get the high energy conversion efficiency. To make your TEG based energy harvesting system design simple and high en energy efficient, we offer a great combo solution with our partner Matrix Industries. Matrix Industries releases a new module product named Prometheo. The Prometheo module gets a built in voltage booster in the module and the generator energy operational body that it is at one seamlessly. The combination of the REM zero MCU and the Prometheus module will get you worth the most efficient energy conversion and minimize the energy loss in energy harvesting operations. This sad example of the energy harvesting system design with a vibration transducer. The typical target applications are health monitoring sensors for electric motors, uh, railways, and bridges. The bivalent based energy harvesting system design is simple enough with the RE MCU. A bivalent transistor generates an AC voltage at the resonant frequency. Therefore, uh, we need a leg fire factory and a few possible components to convert AC, uh, AC voltage to an MHG operational DC voltage. But that's all you need. The key to make the vibration based energy harvesting uh, workable is to select the right transistor part with the resonance frequency that matches the vibration object where you attach your, uh, the energy harvesting system. Our partner company can advise you to get the right transistor based on your part power and the frequency requirements. Here are some uh, examples of the energy harvesting products or custom programs that are in the wine which is used. The top left example is of a available application. The RSL1 is adapted by Casio G-Shop smartwatches and they keep the watch function running powered by a small ring shift DB cell while supporting modern uh, smartwatch features. The bottom left example is of a, is of a uh, industrial health monitoring application. The RSL1 is adapted by Sure for monitoring engine with LTE connectivity for bias remote industrial sensor application. Um, their module can be powered by your energy harvesting power source. The center top example is of a smart faucet. Uh, water turbine is used for energy harvesting to supply power to the smart faucet unit. r is used for it and run an algorithm to control the solenoid power uh, in an energy efficient way. The center bottom example is of a air quality monitoring. The combo solution that uses the RE01 and the Lana Sats, the future low power air quality center, brings a great value to keep the system up running only powered by a small PV cell. The top right example is of a GPS location tracking application. The Lana Sats provides a reference design for battery free uh, GPS location trackers and the way to confirm that the tiny PV cell can keep the system up running for 24 hours, seven days. The bottom right example is about um, battery free um, BLE beacon for remote switch control. A small energy harvesting switch from ZF can generate 300 microwatt power, and RZ1 can generate a couple of uh, uh, Bluetooth low energy advertising packets to control a switch for a uh, lighting system. These are one of the uh, energy harvesting examples held by RZ1. The Lanasas will contribute to boost the energy harvesting enablement on IoT endpoints products and support your uh, energy harvesting system design by the RMCU along with our uh, energy harvesting ecosystem partner solutions. 
Lana first partners with the various companies who provide the energy harvesting solution that fit the early energy very well. It's a good ecosystem for energy harvesting, and we have a wide range of the partner solutions for energy harvesters, uh, the patch components, the energy storage devices, the, with the low power displays, and the energy efficient security solutions. Lamsas is not only an MCU company, but also has the ultra low power sensors, the low quiet scent current regulators, which are also keys for our energy hurricane system design. Please visit the lamsas.com to get more information about our MCU partner uh, ecosystems. I hope you are interested in the RDMCU and uh, its uh, energy harvesting solutions. The RDMCU evaluation kits are available from our distributors. Uh, please visit their website and search the kit port number shown in this page. A solar panel is bundled in the kit and sample applications for energy harvesting are available to download from the Runner's webpage. The kit is a ready to go solution for your getting started uh, with the room for energy harvesting. For more information about the uh, Lana Society MCU and its uh, uh, energy harvesting solution in the ecosystem, please visit lanasas.com slash RE or feel free to contact Ken Emai or Claire Clark. This is my end of presentation. Uh, thank you for your listening. The next presenter, next presenter is a Douglas Tan, CTO at the Matrix Industries. The Douglas will talk about their matrix, the TEG based their energy harvesting technologies and their high energy efficient energy harvesting products and solutions. Thank you. Thank you, Laurent and Ken, for such an informative session so far. Good morning. My name is Douglas Tam, and I'm co founder and CTO of Matrix Industries. Welcome to the Matrix segment of this Energy Harvesting Technology webinar, where I will be introducing our technology and how Matrix will enable a new generation of always-on devices. The number of connected devices has been increasing at an exponential rate, primarily driven by growth in the Internet of Things in the past 10 years. Many of these devices are powered by large capacity batteries. Now, with ever larger and far-flung deployments of such devices, it becomes less and less practical to rely on batteries alone. Imagine the downtime incurred by battery replacement or recharging, as well as the servicing and upkeep costs required to maintain the devices. And it is clear that we will need to employ energy harvesting for a true solution. Now, today, we have decades of advancements in circuit design and device development to thank for reducing the power requirements of compute and sensor elements. At the same time, energy harvesting capabilities have continued to expand and improve. Now, with any energy harvesting technology that is reliant on the environment to produce power, there will be concerns about power reliability, especially for devices that need to be always on. So we hear questions such as, will the harvester continue to supply energy under different conditions? Can it supply enough current to support a burst in power consumption? Will it fail after 10 years? To address these concerns, we see applications integrating combinations of energy harvesting modes, such as thermal with solar or thermal with RF. Simultaneously, energy storage elements with improved cycle lifetimes extend the operating temperatures and reduce leakage are being deployed. So we are on the verge of creating a new generation of devices that will rely on energy harvesting as a source of power to complement or replace battery storage. Matrix Industries was founded in 2011 to realize this vision for energy harvesting. We're based in Menlo Park, California and comprised of a team of experts spanning fields as diverse as material science, thermal engineering, chip design, product development, and manufacturing. We've got over 40 years of combined experience creating and delivering leading edge technology. I'll be introducing our technology in the following slides. Our technology stack is built around matrix IP in advanced materials and chip design, as well as our know-how in thermal engineering and firmware implementations. Shown in the lower left corner are our Gemini thermoelectric generators and mercury boost converter chips, which are integrated into our Prometheus family of energy harvesting modules. 
Prometheus will be instrumental in bringing out thermal energy harvesting technology to the mass market, and it's the core offering that we will be discussing in the following slides. In the middle are the Prometheus EVK kits, which are thermal engineered reference solutions for energy harvesting applications. Each kit contains a companion heat sink and a mechanical housing for Prometheus, and an engineer can use the kit as an example design to build their own applications upon. Finally, at the upper right are some examples of applications that include our expertise on low power algorithms, which we won't get into today. How does Prometheus work? The conversion of energy from heat to electricity relies on the Seebeck effect in thermoelectric materials, which states that a voltage difference is created across a material exposed to a temperature gradient. A good thermoelectric material needs to be simultaneously a good conductor of electricity and a poor conductor of heat. This combination of properties is rarely found in nature. At Matrix, we engineer nanostructured materials that preferentially impede heat flow without affecting electrical conductivity. I like to use a traffic analogy when describing the nanostructured material. Imagine a roadway upon which we have strategically placed traffic cones at some fixed distance apart. With the right spacing of cones, the electrical carriers represented by motorcycles can move quickly along the road with minimal deviations from a straight line path. On the other hand, the heat carriers represented by trucks have to follow a slower meandering route through the field of cones. In this way, a thermoelectric generator can supply an electrical current between its terminals whilst maintaining a temperature difference across its faces. A MNITEG is integrated into every Prometheus module. A TEG outputs high current at relatively low voltage, and in many energy harvesting applications, this voltage can be as low as tens of millivolts. This is insufficient to directly power electronics, and so a boost converter is needed to raise the voltage to suitable levels. Key parameters of interest are the cold start voltage, which is the minimum voltage required to start the boost converter from the off state, and the operation voltage, which is the minimum voltage required to sustain boost converter operation. The Prometheus module contains a mercury boost converter chip, which boasts cold start voltage as low as 16 millivolts and operation voltages as low as 12 millivolts for true micro operation. Mercury's synchronous boost design achieves up to 80% peak conversion efficiency and exhibits high efficiency with near ideal input impedance matching across most of its operation window in contrast to other alternatives. Regulated output voltages can be chosen between two to five volts and can be directly used to charge a battery or to supply the application circuit via a capacitor. Input voltage monitoring with the built-in ADC enables true shutdown and input protection features and also allows the chip to report instantaneous input power to an external microprocessor. The second generation Prometheus II energy harvesting module includes a Mercury II boost converter chip. Mercury 2 improves upon the Mercury boost converter by adding the ability to harvest energy from input voltages of either polarity. The chip automatically detects and adapts to changing input polarity, is able to start from cold start voltages as low as plus or minus 16 millivolts, and continues to operate down to operation voltages of plus or minus 6 millivolts. Similar to Mercury, Mercury 2's bidirectional boost converter design achieves up to 80% peak conversion efficiency, near ideal input impedance matching, and high efficiency across most of its operation window. Mercury 2 also supports uh, regulated output voltages between 2 to 5 volts, and also monitors input voltages for both polarities with a built-in ADC. So, which matrix solution should you use? The answer depends mainly on the nature of the temperature gradient. If your application provides a temperature gradient that's consistently in one direction, use Prometheus. Examples of such applications include wearables that harvest energy from body heat or sensors powered by heat from the equipment being monitored. On the other hand, if your application encounters a temperature gradient that frequently changes in direction, consider Prometheus too. Examples include instruments powered by day-night temperature swings in the environment or devices that need to be powered when encountering temperature gradients of either polarity. 
The Prometheus solution integrates a TEG and boost converter into a single ready-to-use energy harvesting module. Because the TEG and the boost converter are perfectly impedance matched and tuned for each other, Prometheus starts up from a temperature difference as small as 0.5 degrees across its faces, across the entire operating temperature range of minus 40 to 85 degrees Celsius. Only two key parameters are required to determine which uh, Prometheus part to use, the thermal resistance of the heatsink made it to Prometheus and the desired regulator output voltage. Standard offerings are 5.1 millimeters thick and come in three different sizes with custom shapes or sizes available upon request. Prometheus units with the same output voltage can be connected in parallel for increased power output without needing additional components. Simply add a heat sink and attach Prometheus to a heat source to start harvesting thermal energy without having to worry about issues like TEG selection, booster layout, and mechanical integration. Use Prometheus in wearable devices, industrial process monitors, and waste heat energy harvesters. Prometheus 2 integrates a TEG and bidirectional boost converter into a single ready-to-use energy harvesting module. Again, by matching the TEG and the booster, Prometheus 2 starts off from temperature differences as small as plus or minus 0.5 degrees between its faces across the entire operating temperature range of minus 40 to plus 85 degrees C. As before, only two key parameters are required to determine which Prometheus 2 to use the thermal resistance of the heat sink, and the desired regulator output voltage. Standard offerings are 5.1 millimeters thick and come in two different sizes with custom shapes and sizes available. Similarly, Prometheus 2 units with the same voltage output can be connected in parallel. Simply add a heat sink to Prometheus 2 to start harvesting thermal energy. Use Prometheus 2 in remote unattended devices, building and infrastructure monitors, and diurnal heat energy harvesters. To further accelerate application development and enable rapid prototyping, Matrix also offers development kits for Prometheus and Prometheus 2. These EVK kits contain a companion heat sink and a mechanical housing for Prometheus or Prometheus 2. Each kit provides a complete mechanical assembly to attach the heat sink to an energy harvester module, as well as convenient mounting points for the desired application. For example, the flat surface kit is used for harvesting thermal energy from surfaces, provides bolt holes for use with non-magnetic surfaces such as aluminum or brass, and two magnets for use with magnetic surfaces like iron or steel. Other kits are available for harvesting thermal energy from the wrist, upper arm, and more. Each kit contains room for an accessory board with an output connection, and we provide a variety of accessories to support development. A breakout board connects to the energy harvester outputs via spring-loaded pins and it's an easy way to route the output from the module via a cable. A blink board can be used to give a visual indication of energy harvesting by blinking an onboard LED whenever there's sufficient energy. Outside the kit, a proto board provides a small surface for prototyping simple circuits or as a means to connect to the end application circuit. Plans for the kits and accessories are available and can be provided for the engineer to design or fabricate their own parts. Matrix is ready to play a role in eliminating your battery problem. Matrix Prometheus family of energy harvesters will power millions of devices, remove the need to replace or recharge batteries, and enable true unattended operation free remote sensor deployments. We look forward to powering applications in fields as diverse as infrastructure monitoring, industrial sensing, smart agriculture, healthcare, and more. Contact us to learn more about Matrix energy harvesting technology. Now, a big thank you to our partners at Worth Electronic for organizing this webinar, to Laurent and Ken for this informative and fruitful session, and for the opportunity to present today. Thank you for attention. All right, thank you to our presenters, Ken, Douglas, and Laurent. Now, at this time, if you have any questions, please ask them in the questions box, and our presenters will be answering them. We'll begin our question session momentarily. Hi, good morning. This is Douglas from uh, Matrix. Uh, I believe we have a couple questions for myself. Uh, the first question was, uh, how much can the voltage of the harvested input be boosted? 
uh, and there was an example, for example, of trying to recharge back to a 14.4 volt rechargeable, how low could input voltage be such that it could be boosted to recharge the battery. So on our modules, we uh, support an output between two to five volts. So uh, you'd have to then perhaps boost that two to five volt output, depending on what your selection is to, to interface with the 14.4 volt rechargeable. But uh, as, uh, as you see th that uh, the operation voltage is, is the minimum voltage that would allow uh, an output uh, of say five volts if you selected five volts to be achieved. And that's usually on the order of, I'd say about, uh, what's that five volt divided by 20? That's about 20, 25, 25, 250 times, I believe. Um, but that's really not the, the, the true metric. The true metric that I believe is, is the, the right metric is how much power you, you need to get out. And that's usually a, a question of how much heat sink you can afford to put on in your application. So the, obviously the, the, the more heat that you can pass through the Prometheus, the more power that can come out. And really that's the, the, the whole metric behind the choice of uh, heat sink. Uh, that we that we went over uh, earlier. I hope that helps. Uh, the second question is: uh, Are the matrix eval modules available from DigiKey or Mauser or other distributors? Uh, in fact, uh, right now we're still working on that. Uh, but uh, you can, for the time being, you can reach out to us on our website, and uh, very soon you should see a direct link to uh, order them from our website. But in the meantime, you can just contact us via email as well. Hi, this is Laurent. I see also a question. Somebody asked if uh, uh, you can evaluate any of the Renaissance or Matrix solution shown today uh, with the Glenergy kit. Uh, yes, the, the uh, Matrix TEG can be connected to the Glenergy kit as well, but uh, you have to um, use the jumpers that you don't use the built-in TEG because the Glenergy kit have already a TEG kit and you just have to uh, jumper out that and put to the input of the DC-DC converter. Uh, to use the Renesas chip, um, actually the Glenergy chip is, uh, the Glenergy DC-DC converter provide 3.3 .3 volt, but if you disconnect the smart board, the, the um, dust network board, you can go up to even 18 volt. Uh, you, you just have to, uh, remanaged um, uh, resistors for for uh, feedback. So actually you can use even for higher voltage as well. The matrix deliver the five volt and then you can use um, this Glenergy uh, power board and then you can go up to this 14.4 volt what you need. The only one thing you have to consider that the maximum current supplied from the power board is 50 milliamps. Okay, so can you mind speaking uh, regarding the question number five? Uh, it is possible to power NV IoT modules uh, with harvested, harvesting solution. The short answer is yes. Uh, we Lanasas have a, such a use case. Um, as of today, we have a, a one development is going on um, to enable the LTE modem, which is actually power consuming an NV IoT case. Um, but we can manage the uh, case because uh, we can take a small energy from a harvested um, energy harvester device. And the RE MCU, our MCU can manage the power to accumulate the energy into an uh, energy storage device such as a super cap or lithium ion battery. And they can um, um, the discharge the energy uh, to a power consuming device like NVIoT module. Uh, such a power operation, uh, power management, uh, we've already have a solution. It's still a, the portion of it, it's a still on, it's, it's still in development, but uh, we have such a, um, the, the use case and the solution. Uh, so so um, please visit the Lanasas website and we have a partner solutions, and we have the example for at this point, um, we have the lower one enablement, um, the, the, the 
the solution example, uh, we can do the same for the NB IoT. Yes. Uh, so uh, just adding on to Ken's uh, answer on the NB IoT as well, um, and also answering a, a previous question, uh, we Matrix has actually got a, uh, a demonstration that you know we've we've actually worked on. Um, where we've powered uh, LTE modules with the energy harvester, an outdoor energy harvester. And this is to answer both questions. Uh, there was a previous question is uh, for outdoor sensors, are TEGs more suitable since we don't have uh, problems with cleaning the surfaces like with PV? Now, that's true. Um, we've also found that the TEG solution, if properly designed and spec'd for the the LTE application, for example, here, we can generate enough power over the course of a day to support sending multiple transmissions. So it's certainly possible to power NBIoT or LTE modules. Uh, we just have to uh, control the, the power consumption. Um, and then next, uh, I have another question. Can, can matrix uh, also be used for harvesting the energy from an electromagnetic source or is it just for thermal applications? The, the Prometheus modules are set up for thermal harvesting. Now certainly if you have a particular uh, uh, application you'd like to find out more about, uh, feel free to message us and we, we can, we can uh, see if we can uh, assist here. Um, and I guess there's a last question that I just saw here, uh, question seven. Uh, any anything about nuclear generators? I know some things are available, but difficult to find. Now we don't know anything about nuclear generators. Certainly, uh, if you've watched the the Martian, the movie, uh, they they refer to an RTG, a radioisotope thermal generator. Those things are are available, uh, but certainly not to uh, commercially. Uh, so you know, if if you <laughs> If you're able, if you're able to build it, then I suppose we can we can assist. Same from the Switzerland CERN when they made the antimaterial, the cold fusion. Um, it's not public available, so this is not a really energy harvesting. And we have another question. Uh, anyone worked with using your solutions in tribal electric applications? Uh, I am not aware of uh, our anyone using our applications for tribal electric. I think maybe Ken or or, or, or Laurent can answer this a little bit better. Uh, tribal electrics tend to be uh, higher voltage and uh, applications here, so perhaps they they can have a better answer. There are some companies. Oh yeah, okay. you you go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Ken. No, no, no. I just wanted to say um, it, it's it's not available for with the Lanas at this point. We need to learn. Yeah, please go ahead, Laura. I know some companies who are developing uh, triboelectric uh, generators, but uh, not mass production. They are still in research uh, mode. So it will be one day, but today I don't know anyone who have. Uh, mass production or, or standards or something like that. All right, thank you to our wonderful presenters from Worth Electronic, Matrix Industries and Renesis. And also thank you for joining us for today's uh, first power webinar of 2021, Energy Harvesting, now a real and efficient solution. And we learned it is indeed. Now, if your question didn't get answered or you wanna go in depth with our presenters, feel free to shoot us an email at here for you at we-online.com. That's here, the number four, Y-O-U at we-online.com. Don't forget to join us for tomorrow's webinar, George Slama Returns. It's last week's sequel. We're going to be presenting Basics of Power Transformers. Register online at www.we-online.com slash webinars. And of course, thank you to our wonderful sponsors, DigiKey Electronics, the exclusive sponsor of all Worth Electronic webinars. I'm Amelia Thompson, wishing you a great day.